got a new series of exam question walkthrough videos. So these are all about practical skills. This first one's about rates. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start then. So the first thing I want to do is do the calculation so we know what quantities of chemicals to use. Then I'll move on to talking about the procedure that you would need to follow. And then we'll talk about how you process the results graphically to calculate that initial rate. So obviously the first thing we need is the chemical equation for the reaction between hydrochloric acid and zinc. So there it is there. And we're told that the student wants to collect 72 centimetres cubed of hydrogen, obviously in this gas syringe, at RTP. So the moles of hydrogen that they're going to want to collect is the volume over the molar gas volume. So in centimetres cubed, that's 24,000. So that's 3 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of hydrogen to be collected. So from the mole ratio, the moles of zinc needed will be 3 times 10 to the minus 3. So we'll work out how many grams that is. And remember, it says the zinc needs to be in excess so obviously, once we've got the mass of zinc, we need to increase that slightly so that it's in excess. So the mass of zinc, moles times MR, so there's your calculator value. It's a two decimal place balance, so they would need to be using greater than 0 0.20 grams of zinc. So if we move on to the HCl now, so obviously the mole ratio between the hydrogen and the HCl is 1 to 2, so they're going to need 6 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of HCl. So we're going to have to come up with a suitable volume of HCl. So just to keep the maths easy, let's suppose we wanted to use 60 centimetres cubed of HCl. What concentration would it need to be um, for that volume? So concentrations, moles divided by volume, obviously in decimetres cubed. So the concentration of HCl would need to be 0 0.10 moles per decimetre cubed. So that's what we'll go for. Now, there are other ways to achieve the 6 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of HCl, so here's another option. You could go for double the concentration of acid, so 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed, which would mean you'd only need half the volume, so 30 centimeters cubed. Now, if you've gone for 1 mole per decimeter cubed HCl, then the problem with that is the volume of acid you need is only 6 centimeters cubed. And the issue around that is that you'd have a large percentage uncertainty in that measurement. And if you went for 2 moles per decimeter cubed acid, you'd only need 3 cm cubed of it, which is ridiculously small, and the error would be very, very large. So, personally, I'd go for that. So, moving on to the procedure now, we've established that they've got to use more than 0 0.2 grams of zinc. So, I've just gone for 0 0.25 grams of zinc. Obviously, that's using the two decimal place balance, but... We're not going to get any marks for saying that because it's all mentioned up in the information. So measure out the, the mass of zinc. Measure out that 60 cm cubed of 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed HCl. Again, obviously using the measuring cylinder. Next thing we need to do is add the reactants to that conical flask in the diagram, attach the gas syringe and start a stopwatch. The final thing we need to say for the procedure is just that they need to measure the volume of gas produced at regular time intervals. I would always quote a suitable time, so I'm going for about 20 seconds. You don't want it too close together, otherwise you'd be, you know, it wouldn't be manageable if it was like every five seconds or something like that. Uh, obviously, if it's too wide apart, that's not great either. So 20 to 30 seconds would be fine there. So moving on to the processing of the results graphically. So the first thing they do is they plot a graph of volume against time. They draw a tangent to the curve at the start of the reaction, so in other words, t equals zero. Remember, we've got to calculate the initial rate. We then calculate the gradient of that tangent, so they'd get the change in volume, change in y, and divide that by the change in time, so the change in x. And then we'll just finish off by saying that the gradient is equal to the initial rate. 